So uh, we talked about how uh, how I, I categorize depression, and uh, we talked about the difference between sadness and depression. I think it's important to understand which is which, because uh, because depress 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 um, depression uh, has sad tendencies, obviously, but sadness doesn't necessarily mean depression. So we talked about the difference in that, but we 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 broke down four uh, in my own way, four different ways I used to describe depression. Um, chemical, spiritual, crisis and trauma, and circumstantial. And because uh, growing up, man, and many people to this day, um, especially I'm black, right? And so especially in the black communities, and I don't know, I can't speak to any other type of community because I'm, I haven't, obviously I'm not, I didn't grow up in that way. But uh, I feel like mental health is something that we have not talked about. Uh, and it's something that we don't give attention to. And uh, And so, and then secondly, is that when you do mention mental health, the the immediate thought is that it's a demonic spiritual attack or something of those regards. So instead of uh, parents taking their their children uh, to therapists or psychologists and people who can know how to ask the right questions and how to and how to encourage them to express their feelings, to communicate, because so many things people internal internalize. Uh, we bring them to the pastor. They sit them in the office, and they're now they're feeling like they are being rebuked because something is wrong with them. Then they get hands laid on them and whatnot. And so then, from that moment on, that that traumatic experience, the kid will then will not even express anything um, if the if this issue did not solely have a spiritual root. Now, let me tell you, I my wife and I we can we have stories for days. We have experienced experienced so often the angelic. Uh, the, the the and the demonic, the presence of God, and 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 then just fighting uh, uh, people who are fighting to for demons to be cast out of people and all this other. I believe it. It's all real. It's seen with my eyes. Countless, 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 countless of times. Little girls with supernatural strength who's possessed. I've seen it countless of times. So by no means am I um, removing. Uh, spirituality or the spirit spirit realm from the this particular category. I just think it's important that that is not our first and absolute thought. That we give it some. That we take some due diligence to ask some proper questions um, before we. You know, I'm a pastor myself, right? So before we just take our children or we take ourselves solely to the altars and we have hands laid on us. And expect things to be cast out. But here's the thing. I believe this very with every ounce within me. Uh, I believe there's things that uh, you cast out. There's things you crucify. Uh, when you read in scripture, you read about the Lord casting out, uh, uh, about casting out demons. And uh, but you but you when you read when he's regarding us in our own life, we read examples where he's telling us to pick up our own cross. He's saying, therefore, you've been crucified with Christ and live Christ and live life and live. We, we tear here about our own personal crucifixion, right? Our own, our own um, responsibility to put matters in our own hands. Because I believe this. I believe it's impossible to cast out flesh. I believe it. I believe it's impossible to go to the altar and say, in the name of Jesus, I, re- I rebuke this flesh. And expect your flesh to be a spirit and just cast out. Right. I, I um, in these regards, I believe we rebuke the strong men. I believe we rebuke demonic spirits, demonic strongholds. I believe there's things we we fight. But I think that the problem with this soul thought taken out of context is that we outsource to God our own responsibilities to saying no to things we need to say no to, saying yes, things we need to say yes to, taking care of ourselves, communicating, speaking shutting doors that would need to be shut, putting boundaries in our relationships, right? And so when I mean crucifying our flesh, I mean evaluating our lives and saying, hey, what actions are in my life that is causing me harm? What actions to, can I do with with myself to say, you know what, enough is enough. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I got to break this thing, right? Because so, like I said, so I am not by any means saying, I don't want you to take what I'm saying in the wrong way, uh, and take it out of context. We, there is, there are spiritual issues. There totally are spiritual issues. There are demonic problems. There's, oh, I believe it, everything else within me. However, I think it's important to making sure that we are confronting uh, topics such as this on many, many different arenas. I'm telling you, and I say this with so much passion 
because there's been so many times I've had a student in my office where where they're an introverted personality. They're very analytical. They're very industrial. They're very uh, inward thinking processor, a processor. They don't vocalize. They need to think to speak in order to think to speak. And then, but both parents are not the same. Both parents are an otter or golden retriever or a lion. They're, they, they, or they, 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 they speak up. They're, they're, they're very vocal regarding what they're going through and what they're feeling. They wear their emotion in their sleeves. And so then they bring this kid into my office saying, Hey, I think there's something wrong with my kid. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, I, they're, they're just going through things. They're not listening to me. They're not doing this or doing that. And so many times, and they're thinking, some of them, regarding whatever background they're coming from, they say, well, we had the pastor anoint the house. We had this, all the other stuff. When it was, it's literally the kid uh, not communicating or the parents are then them not, all of them not knowing how to communicate. So what I'm saying, it's easier to, it is by far easier in the church to stamp it demonic because then we can outsource all the responsibility. There's no responsibility for us to look at ourselves and say, what am I doing? What can I do? What have I brought into myself? Is there something wrong? Is there a chemical imbalance? Is there whatever it may be. So we understand we understand chemical imbalances when they're regarding a physical issue. We understand that when you're when you're you're the insulin issues or whatever or a diabetic. We understand a physical thing. We won't go to the doctor, won't think and we and we won't some won't think anything of it. But when it comes to the mental chemical imbalance, whatever reason there's a taboo or regarding this particular topic, I don't know. But we're so quickly, if we're not careful to to excuse uh, uh, this this thought process. So I just say uh, we talked about how they are. We talked about how they are. Um, there are chemical, uh, there are spiritual, and there are uh, a crisis uh, or trauma or reasonings or 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 things for depression but uh one of the big things we talked about uh, was uh circumstantial right and so a great example of this you can read about was about elijah and um and what he went through from the highs and lows of his life and went from a very high place in first corinth uh, first kings i'm sorry uh chapter 18 verse 20 to 39 is a story about him uh, at the Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal and had so much certainty in God calling down fire to, the, to consume the altar that they bathed with water for four, three other times. Like there's so much certainty. Right. And uh, you can read in verse 41 to 44. Right after the moment with the prophets of Baal, uh, he he called down rain uh, after there was a that there was many, many. There was a crazy long drought that caused a famine in the land. He believed God for rain. Um, and then right after that, to beat the rain and whatnot, he he Bible said the power came upon him and he literally outran a chariot. He experienced supernatural power of God. But then right after these moments of his high places, he immediately seeks sunk seeks gets sunken uh, to a low situation because uh, Jezebel was threatened to kill his life. And he literally, literally, and the Bible doesn't specify the length of time where it's the next day or whatnot, but he literally went from a high emotional state to a drastically low emotional state where where he literally prayed verbatim, prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said, take my life. Right. And then he was in he's hiding in a cave or whatever. He was saying, oh, woe is me. He was super scared. He was wondering what was going to happen. He felt abandoned. He kept saying, like, I'm alone. There's no one else doing this. I'm by myself. He was he was speaking in absolutes, which is always dangerous, because when you speak in absolutes um, regarding your emotions, typically they're not true. They're rooted in some some extreme pendulum thought process. Just like in marriage, when you start, when you start saying he always or he nevers or, or she always says this or always do this, you know what I'm saying? It's it's a dangerous thing, right? And so, um, so anyways, and then from there, but you can see how God treats him in this moment. He see, so there is he. You see, he didn't he didn't rebuke Elisha. He didn't rebuke him. He didn't cast out that spirit, quote unquote of depression or sadness out of his life, did he? No. What did, what did the Lord do? The Lord told him to sleep, lay down, get some rest. He fed him. He ate. Multiple times he did this. What it was God doing? He was showing the importance of self-care. And so from this, from this uh, experience is that God was helping him to help change his perspective about how he treated himself and self care and whatnot. He literally right after that, he experienced a moment where he, maybe he assessed that the stress of his life was maybe too much. And he literally was going to the next thing where he was transitioning 
uh, he's going to be transitioning from uh, his um, his his leadership. Right. Uh, and I think it's important always to evaluate your life in this regard. But this was awesome. Super dope is the moment where the Lord appeared to Elijah. Uh, he said he led him to a high place. Right. And again, he was talking about I'm the, I'm the only one left. I'm, I'm by myself or whatever. And uh, the, the, the Lord passed through. But the Bible talks about he didn't. He, the Bible says that the earthquake came, but the Lord was not in there. He said the wind came, but the Lord wasn't there. So the fire came, the Lord wasn't there. But then the Bible talks about, uh, and then after the fire came, a gentle whisper. King James Version says a still, quiet voice. When Elijah heard it, he pulled a cloak over his face, and he knew it was the Lord. That was the Lord was in. The Lord was in that still, quiet voice. And I just think it's God had to slow things down. God had to get him some rest. God had to, God had to help him to know, help him to know and get some rest that, that hey, I'm here. He had to hear his word. He had to hear his 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 truth. Hey, I'm here. I got you. I think it's important that especially when you're moments in circumstantial depression or worry or deep sorrow and sadness, family, we got to make sure we are trying our best to put things in proper perspective. He wasn't alone. Jesus even addressed this. How many thousands of people, remnant of people that that, that is also was standing uh, up for the Lord and that doing those moments. But it's important. So I just think it's an, it's, it's is a, just a simple example uh, just to show the regard this to how the Lord treated Elijah in this particular moment. He didn't rebuke him, didn't cast him out. He didn't cast a demon out of him. He was dealing with his emotional well-being that was connected in some moments that we can assume regarding his his inability to rest, to sleep. Probably was wearing and mom was going crazy and he fed him. He had new, he had he had nourishment. It's important, right? When you eat, it releases dopamine, it releases uh, serotonin, at least all these other things that was important uh, just for your own life. But again, we can see examples where this man uh, in the book of Mark chapter five, he had he had some sort of mental issue, mental state that was directly connected to 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 uh, through a demonic uh, uh, presence. He was literally possessed by legions of demons. The Bible says he will take sharp stones and cut himself. He would he would he would self mutilate himself in this regard about he was told he was in chains. He would break the chains apart people. And he was just a demonic, a, a, a demonized individual possessed in the in the he came. This demon came to Jesus. God rebuked the demons, cast him out into some pigs. And um, and after the Bible says that and the man was delivered, the Bible says he was dressed and in his right mind. This is an example where, again, it was there's some spiritual things there were some strongholds. Right. That God rebuked the demon and then the man found his rest. So by no means am I saying that there's not any there couldn't there couldn't possibly be demonic situations or, or, or spiritual roots or issues regarding personal life. It could be. But I think it's important that we understand that we take every situation different, that we do not immediately assume that the, my, the reason why my life is the way it is or that my child is the way it is because the devil possessed them or the devil's on them. Because I think it, when we have that sole thought, we excuse ourselves to not take the harder journey to say, hey, uh, what am I doing? We're not we're not filling our feelings. We're not communicating. We're not speaking. There is so much family. There's so much PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, uh, 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 PTS. Did I say that right? Um, there's so. I don't even know if I said it right, but there's just so much stress and issues regarding the black community um, across generations from general from slavery, all this other things. Right. And even now with uh, all this stuff going on, literally people are fear from the life when when they when they see a cop, they wonder or they get pulled over. They wonder, I say, hey, is this the moment? Am I going to die today? You're, this, is the re, this is literally the realities that people walk through every single day. Right. And then people just cope with things. And so we go to Sunday. We hear a great sermon about won't God do it and we'll shout and we will buck. But then we won't deal with the emotional health, forgetting that the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary was not a singular soul approach, but a holistic approach to the complete healing of your life, your well-being, your body. Jesus died to make you whole, to make you well. And it is vital, paramount. That we give attention to it. So I think there's an exchange that needs to happen for your ashes. There's a, for your beauty, the ashes, right? And you read in book and reading this uh, in, in the Old Testament, there's an exchange that happens that God will do. Like it, it, I will encourage you step into that into that cashier right now and make that exchange to whatever worry, whatever is burdening you, whether it's trouble, giving you trouble. Make an exchange where you're where you're no longer trying to hold this and carry this on yourself. 
where you're not trying to outsource your problems um, to 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 uh, to a drug or circumstance or substance abuse or things of that nature where you're trying to drink it away, smoke it away, sex it away, sn- uh, sniff it away, uh, uh, whatever the case may be where you or eat it away. But you're learning how to feel your feelings. You're learning how to cope, how to not just cope, but to conquer. But in order to cope, in order to conquer, you have to confront. So, again, maybe your situation, the state you're in, maybe is circumstantial. But let me tell you, the Bible is very clear that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And I'm believing, family, your joy is here. And that joy and the joy of the Lord is your strength. So I encourage you to making sure that you are be that you give some thought, make, take some inventory in your own life. If you're going through some things, it's okay to go to the doctor. It's okay. Don't let no one tell you anything different. It is okay. If you're sick, if you sick, you have a cut, you literally, you go to the doctor for that cut and you don't think anything of it, right? But if there is, you feel like there's something in your mental state, your emotional state that you just need a doctor for that can help you along the way, go for it. Again, I have my own strong opinions regarding being super, super medicated regarding uh, that that then becomes our own crutch where we medicate ourselves so we don't have to feel it. I think that is, in my own opinion, wrong, that we need to learn how to give some wisdom on how to navigate things. I do believe things you may need medical help do. But again, I am not qualified to tell you to stop taking or to take medication. That's why I'm encouraging you to making sure you find professional help. Uh, but you're honest with yourself. Uh, but if there's a spiritual root, family, you best believe is important to get some attention to. Man, God has you. God has it all. God has your back, right? And pastors, we're here for you. We're here to give biblical counseling and stuff like that nature, right? But if there, especially if there's crisis and trauma, listen, these things can these things will happen to you. There will these things will will be planted. Uh, your crisis can be planted when you're six, but still have a harvest uh, when you're sixty. It's important to give attention to it. You'll drop your anchor at that place, but then you will just swim circles around it for the rest of your life. So it's important to give attention to family. So, anyways, this podcast is already already getting pretty long. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be quiet. But I want to encourage you all to give attention to your own mental state because you're worth fighting for. So, but just maybe you need to learn how to have healthy relationships, how to seek the face of God, how to rest. Take care of yourself. Find some hobbies, right? Stop self-medicating. Stop substituting healthy conversation with with one night stands and momentary pleasures and create a moment in an environment in your life where you can find health because your health is important.